library to check out books, all of a sudden were just coming up to us and saying, I have a six-year-old, what do you recommend? And they didn't ever come to the libraries and ask me to help them with their six-year-old or sixteen-year-old who had gone to different schools. They were in more local or different schools. But they always came to the music sale. And I, I always found that fascinating, but it allowed me to build a relationship with them and learn about their children who were in other schools. And then, you know, when I saw them throughout the year, I could keep going with that relationship. Um, at SSIS, we do a smaller, we do a series of smaller sales. We do uh, tables at parent-teacher conferences. We have one next weekend at Family Fun Day. Uh, and we just do a donation box. So, uh, we just do them at, um, uh, we just do a donation box at SSIS. We're not, we don't label, we don't recommend pricing. We just put a box in wrapping paper and put it next to the books and then we're there to help them. So it's very, very low energy on our part, but it's, it's helpful. And then you have a little kitty fun. Yeah. Kitty fun, actually. It's easier to keep on this a little bit bigger than little. Uh, because of these, okay. Um, the first year I was there, I weeded a lot. I weeded 8,000 books. Um, because, yeah, I weeded a lot. Um, and so, you know, if some of you uh, struggle to find a place to dispose of your weeded books, the used book sale is great. And we also do we outreach with charity schools and organizations that we have a lot of it. And one day I was walking down the street and I saw a used bookshop, a funny little used bookshop, and I went in and talked to the man, and then he came to the end of the used bookshop and he would just uh, give us a price for the lot and he'd take them away. <laughs> it was yeah. wonderful, he just took everything away. And he would sell it at his, at his used bookshop. So. Um, just a heads up, in some countries that I've worked in, it's illegal to make money from the books that you do. So, uh, so yeah, just yeah sometimes you see things that legal to make money. Yeah, money in the books. In the US, you can't do that either. Yeah. But my solution to that is I don't take the money myself. I donate it to another building library. And so then there's no one cares. Right. Um, so I can't keep the money, but I can donate it. For any charity. Right. Yeah. Right. So then we have visiting authors. We also you know, rope in the parent community at, at, at that way too and provide something for them. So we have a couple from CAC and a couple from um, SSIS. Um, uh, you know, we had an or, uh, a specialist in math and origami come. Yeah, so she came and she's not a, an experienced um, good school visitor. She doesn't have any books. She just likes to do origami and she combines that with math. And so she, you know, we could get her to work all day long with different groups of kids at lunch, at recess, after school, before school. The parents came for the uh, origami, everything. It was really great. And in fact, uh, after she left, a couple of the kids had even Skype calls with them when they were trying to figure out some origami. Um, but it did bring some parents in who otherwise would not have come in for, for like, a, like a regular book. Then we had John Coy. Uh, we highly recommend him. He writes mostly picture books, but he also has some middle grade uh, sports chapter books. He was really, really good. He gave a great um, presentation to parents. And uh, we definitely recommend him. He's very easy to host. He's a great guy. Um, and then Laura Keller is an elementary librarian at Saigon South, and she always has a parent session from four to five uh, during the week that we have our visiting authors. And she has to um, issue tickets because we can't have all the people that would want to come. So we have to issue, I don't think you charge for them necessarily, they just issue tickets for crowd control. Um, and another thing that has, uh, this is an aside, but it, it, uh, people have benefited from this, we had to create a slide before our presentations of this sort that say, please turn off your cell phones, please keep your smaller children with you, and we translated it into Vietnamese and Chinese and Korean and English. And we have the standard set of slides that we now flash up uh, so that everybody kind of understands our art etiquette. So we do that all the time. And then this year, I also wanted to recommend Neil DeBerka, who came to us with Carrie Giddings, who's now doing the presentation, an Irish storyteller, and he was just amazing. He had him Yeah, he was amazing. So if you need a, if you'd like a storyteller, he was just there, and he, you also did a parent session for him. And 
after school activities program ends at four, okay. and so I wanted anybody who was doing an, an ASA okay. to be able to come directly from ASAs, and so some we have a great playground. A lot of parents just stayed if their kids weren't in ASAs and let their kids play on the playground, and I closed the library until <coughs> about 4.10, and then let people in. And actually, this, it, it ended up being a little bit too long. I would say, especially if you're doing for early years, probably a, an hour is, is all you need. Um, and Laura read one book to the crowd, right? I did. I did one story song and then uh, in a book. And I think that will work better with a smaller group. You know, when you've got 200 people in the room, it's hard to. I just offered to go. I was new to SSIS, and she was doing this kind of cool thing. And I said, yeah, oh, I'll come, sure. You didn't know what you were going to do. And I would never have wanted. At one point, she said, can you stay? And I was like, I would never leave you with this ever. <laughs> When we, uh, this year we're doing the panda books for, uh, we promote, started promoting the panda book, book awards thing. Um.